Welcome to the 2022 Unshackler Awards. My name is Damien Ferry, the Senior Editor of The Unshackled. And now we are approaching the seventh year that we are doing this in a row. Basically the way we started was that we were sick and tired of having the same old woke uh, people getting selected as Australian of the Year and we thought we'd put our own awards up and make sure that the people decided who the winners are going to be of these great awards. So how I'm going to run it through is I'm going to run it through 10 awards in the reverse order from 10th to 1st place, tell you where it is that everybody came in the voting and make sure that we get these um, awards done and the rankings done. Now there have been some reports or some people that every year complain thinking that these rewards are rigged but I can assure you that they aren't and that these votes are legit. There are a couple of awards that are extremely, um, some candidates you can say or nominees have gotten a lot, a higher percentage that we've ever seen before and this is simply because that they have been able to gauge their followers in selecting them and have spread it all over social media and uh, accounts and everything like that and they've been able to do a good job of it and because of that they've had high percentages come out for them so even though it might look ridiculous it definitely isn't and it's real and there's no way that we would ever botch this up so here we go we don't do things like elections here we make sure that we get everything done legit so how are we going to run it through let's go ahead and start it shall we so the first award that I'm going to present to you is the 2022 Fake News of the Year Award. Now, previous winners we've had in the past, we've had CNN in 2016, ABC 2017, 18, 19 and 21, and The Project in 2020. So let's see how they fare in these awards. So here we go. We've had nominees like The New Daily, 7 News, News.com.au, 9 News, the Guardian, Crikey, CNN, fourth place, third place with 15% of the vote goes to the project. Definitely rewarding at that. A fake news uh, show like that that doesn't get any ratings and basically is put there as propaganda. So there you go. ABC, of course, they normally for many years now have won it, but they've come in second place with 31% of the vote rewarding in their own right for second place and first place amazingly enough is the Daily Mail on 39% Daily Mail has definitely um, been a hit amongst many uh, people in recent times with their reddit articles basically posting uh, promotions for only fans and likewise ba basically junk tabloid uh, nothing to be taken serious and deserving a first place for fake news of the year the next award we will present is the 2022 International Media Personality of the Year Award. Now in previous winners we've had Milo 2016 and 17, we've had PJW, Paul Joseph Watson, we've had Tucker Carlson the last three years in a row winning it, so let's see how they fare. Now we've started with Luke Rutkowski, Tim Pool, Palki Sharma, Alex Jones, Katie Hopkins, Stu Peters, Russell Brand, and in third place with 16% of the vote, Paul Joseph Watson. Coming in at second place, Candace Owens with 25% of the vote. Very strong anti-abortion candidate, pro-life candidate there. And on the first place of the Media Personality of the Year, again, Tucker Carlson with 30% of the vote. That's the fourth time in a row that he has won that award and very deserving of it, uh, Fox News presenter, of course, with his own show, and someone that has definitely uh, gauged um, alt-right um, views and put them in the mainstream, basically airing them there, been a very uh, pro-freedom presenter, very much against the lockdowns, mandates, and so forth, so someone that is definitely deserving of that award for Media Personality of the Year. We will now go to the 2022 Degenerate of the Year. Previous winners, Vanya, Tom Bollard, 2018, Jessica Yanev in 2019, Hunter Biden, 2020, and Anthony Fauci in 2021. So it is a, an award that has had multiple different winners. So we'll see 
how we go here today. Now we've had candidates, Neil Parrish, Chris Pitcher, uh, Ellen Page, Rebel Wilson, Sam Brinton, Dylan Mulvaney, Ghislaine Maxwell, third place, transgender Rachel Levine on 9%. Now we've got second place, Hunter Biden on 24%, definitely deserving of that role there in that place. And first place with a huge 44%, Joffa Corfe. Now Joffa Corfe, a Collingwood identity within the AFL, um, has had uh, sex abuse scandals with teenage boys. Uh, definitely someone deserving of Degenerate of the Year award. And um, hopefully, definitely going to pay for his crimes. So here we go now. Um, completely opposite award coming up here. Uh, 2022 Culture Warrior of the Year award. Now, previous winners, we've had Sam Hyde, 2017, 2018 Daisy Cousins, 2019 Jacinta Price, and... The last two years, uh, we've had Mark Latham, 2020 and 21. So here we go, we've got our nominees, Stephen Chavura, Alexandra Marshall, Evelyn Ray, Catherine Devez, Augusto Zimmerman, Bernie Finn. Mark Latham, ending up getting the uh, fourth position there. And on third place, the ACL... Um, Ex-ACL, uh, Martin Isles, actually, not ex uh, current ACL, actually, so I'm getting confused there. But um, he has been a, a very strong uh, candidate for the Christian lobby, uh, a strong uh, voice for Christian values, and uh, someone deserving of the Culture Warrior of the Year award um, in third place, of course. Now, second place, we've got Jacinta Price. Someone that has definitely been uh, outspoken on all sorts of issues and someone that doesn't take the stereotypical view of an uh, Aboriginal uh, woman and that uh, definitely sees things um, from um, not left of centre but um, from a logical position and standpoint on many issues. Now in first place and winner of the Culture Warrior of the Year Award 2022 is Drew Pavalu. Now Drew Pavalu. Uh, with 35% of the vote, edging out Jacinta on 31%, is um, a very uh, big critic of the Chinese Communist Party and has his own party, the Democratic Alliance. Uh, definitely someone with a bright future and that will continue fighting for his values as Culture Warrior of the Year. So definitely deserving of that award. Now we've got the 2022 Triggered Feminist of the Year Award. Previous winners, 2016 Hillary Clinton, Sarah Henson Young, 2017 and 18, 2019 Greta Thunberg, 2020 Clementine Ford and 21, uh, last year was Lydia Forbe. Now Lydia Forbe has uh, upgraded to um, the Regressive Award, so wasn't um, in this listing but will be in a listing a little bit later on. So here we go, we've got our nominees, Vanessa Van Badham. Louise Milligan, Amber Heard, definitely thought she would be a little higher up than that, Sarah Hansen Young, Magda Zubansky, Megan Markle, Jacinda Ardern in the fourth, third place with 9%, Lisa Wilkinson, someone that was uh, on the project, definitely um, a huge feminist and someone deserving of that position. Uh, second place, Grace Tame with 10% of the vote. Another um, feminist there that was definitely um, causing a lot of havoc in the 2022 year, that was. And um, was very uh, popular for the wrong reasons. Very infamous, I'd say. Uh, first place with 52% of the vote. A massive turnout for Clementine Ford. Won it again after her win in 2020. And deserving of that award. She's definitely a misandrist, got the cuck boyfriend, of course, and um, someone that has been very outspoken, not in the right way, of course, uh, definitely not representing our values. And um, let's just say that uh, life hasn't been too bright for her. I mean, the constant whinging 
and rambling on that she does on social media. It's um, definitely not working out too well for her. So um, I guess that's what occurs when you have such ridiculous and extreme views like hers. So let's continue on now to the 2022 Cis White Male of the Year Award. Previous winners, Corey Bernardi, 2016 and 17, Tommy Robertson, 2018, Tony Abbott in 2019, Craig Kelly in 2020, and 2021 was Kyle Rittenhouse. So we've basically had a different winner nearly every year. A very uh, broad award here. So here we go with the nominees. Craig Kelly, Matt Cannon, Peter Dutton, Gerard Rennick, Kyle Rittenhouse, George Christensen, Malcolm Roberts. On third place, with 7% of the vote, Novak Djokovic, and I tell you what, very deserving of the third place. He is someone that stood up against vaccine mandates, and I mean, he lost money and was able to say, look, you know, I am happy not to play because I don't believe in these mandates. And look, I mean, he missed out one year, but he was back again this year and has a good chance of going all the way. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's just the way it is. You stick to your values and things will work out in the end and you never buckle. And he showed courage and brave and something that no other athlete really came out and did. I mean, very few did anyway. So I, I really have a lot of admiration for him for it. Second place with 9%, Alex Antich. A great Liberal Party member, someone that has always been outspoken and gone against his party on many issues when it comes to the COVID lockdowns, mandates and so forth. Um, a true fighter for freedom. And with first place, with 54% of the vote, Barclay McGain. Now Barclay is an uh, author of a spectator, an, act an activist, a monarchist, a conservative, someone that has been in this game for a long, long time. And um, someone that has a strong following. I mean, 54%, you can't argue with that. Way out in front from second place here. And uh, someone that has a bright future ahead of him. So I uh, bid him a uh, congratulations for his win of the Cis White Male of the Year. Now we go to the 2022 International Cuck of the Year. Previous winners, 16, 17 and 18 was Justin Trudeau. Someone that won it quite a lot of times there. Richard Di Natale in 2019, 2020 and 21, the last two years was Prince Harry. So let's see how they fare in this time round. Nominees, Jeremy Hunt, Emmanuel Macron, Matt Keane, Malcolm Turnbull, Justin Trudeau, Volodymyr Zelensky, Joe Biden. In third place with 2% of the vote, Prince Harry. Someone definitely deserving of that place, getting definitely cucked. Um, by his uh, superior partner, as you would call it, and um, someone that's been really bossed around and has basically taken it. So I'm not sure what he's getting out in his part of the deal there, but it's definitely not worth it, I don't think I would imagine. Second place, 4%, Pat Cummins. Pat Cummins definitely deserving of the second place. And with a whopping 91%, in first place. I've never seen a percentage so high as this, so definitely a lot of people getting behind this candidate as cuck of the year. This is Kevin Rudd, ex-PM of Australia, um, a huge globalist, one of the biggest globalists around, um, definitely competing with Malcolm Turnbull on that one, huge sympathiser with China. I mean, this guy here was one of the worst PMs we ever had in Australia and is definitely something, someone deserving of the International Cuck of the Year Award. Um, we'll move on to the 2022 International Unshackler of the Year. So previous winners we've had in the past, Donald Trump for um, many of the years in 2016, 17, 19 and 20, Fraser Running in 2018 and Ron DeSantis last year in 2021. So let's see how they fare. We've got Clive Palmer, Victor Orban, Rand Paul, Jair Bolsonaro, Georgia Maloney, Kanye West, Donald Trump for place there. And in third place with 10% of the vote, that goes to Elon Musk. Elon having a huge impact with his social media uh, buy of Twitter. 
someone that a lot of people are getting behind. Um, second place, a huge favourite for many people, Ron DeSantis in 11%, someone that um, may be very well the next president of the US and that would be someone that would make a good candidate for sure as president. And in first place with a whopping 62%, Pauline Hanson, and this is the first time she's won this award, she's been nominated in the awards for pretty much every year and has usually gotten a top three finish but has edged in 62%, a huge showing there for her. Definitely someone that a lot of people respect, and at the end of the day, love or hate her, you know where she stands. Someone that uh, was very much uh, on the freedom side of things with the COVID lockdowns and mandates. A lot of respect for her, one of the first patriots in the modern era to come out and really re-kick this uh, nationalist um, movement back in 96. So, um, someone that is well loved by many. Now we've got one of the huge awards here. We've got the 2022 Australian Unshackler of the Year. Now we've had previous winners such as Eve Black in 2020, 2021 Rod Cullerton. Let's see who we've got now. We've got Morgan C. Jonas, Joel Jamal, John Adams, Ralph Babbitt, Rukshan Fernando, Graham Hood, Monica Smith, Maria Z is in third place with 1% and you're thinking how is it that she's got third position at 1%? Well, let's just say this, the top two candidates have had a, a massive showing, so much so that all the rest of the candidates on the list have had either a 1% or even a 0% showing. Not to say that there wasn't votes there, but the votes were just absolutely huge for the next two candidates, especially the one that came in first. So we will now go to second place, Simeon Boykov, of course is the Aussie Cossack. 13% of the vote, someone that's had a huge impact this year. There's nothing like seeing him troll politicians on the streets. Is definitely a good laugh and someone that is funny to watch. First place though, on 80% of the vote, another massive showing for Harrison McLean. It's the first time he's won this award. He was definitely one of the biggest uh, activists uh, of the pandemic, or against the pandemic, when that was on. Um, Melbourne protester, an author, of course, someone that has had a huge impact in uh, the year of last, and someone that has a huge bright future ahead of him as well. So definitely have to watch out for Harrison McLean. Now, this is the last award that we've got, and it's the 2022 Australian Regressive of the Year. One of the big awards here. Now, previous winners we've had is 2016, we had Waleed Ali, of course. Tom Tanuki, 2019. Now, Dan Andrews, Daniel Andrews, has had the award in 2017, 2018, 2020, and 2021. So four times out of the six pastimes, he's won that award. Let's see how he fares here. Now we've got nominees Monique Ryan, Sally Cap, Kerry Chant, Anastasia Palaszczuk, Brad Hazard, Mark McGowan, Anthony Albanese. In third place, 1% of the vote. Of course, this is a similar scenario to last. It's Lydia Thorpe. And definitely someone deserving third position. She's someone that has, um, well, for the wrong reasons, made an impact on the political uh, scale. But nevertheless, um, someone that uh, is very dangerous in her ideology and whatever the cost must be stopped. It is absolutely crazy that anybody can support a vile uh, person like her. So um, we can only hope that uh, in future that she doesn't stay in politics for very long. Although there would be other people taking her spot in a heartbeat, so it's going to be a, a very long ride, but um, definitely have to see how we go there. On second position, with 9% of the vote, Stan Grant. He's of course the Q&A host, Stan Grant. So um, definitely well deserving of that, definitely someone that isn't very uh, even and is very biased in his approach to uh, that particular program. And in first, pl first place, 89% of the vote, huge, 89%, Daniel Andrews. I mean, this, 
I mean, this does not surprise me. I mean, the amount of votes that we had for Daniel Andrews, I mean, just imagine living in the communist state of Victoria. It would have been an absolute nightmare during the pandemic. It would have been crazy. The amount of uh, rules and um, nonsense that he was um, doing, he was absolutely vile, an absolute tyrant would be the word for it. And the crazy thing about it is he got voted back in. I mean, impossible you would have thought. Definitely something not right uh, with the results. There was definitely some shifty things going on. But apart from that is there was still too many people voting for him that uh, was too um, unclose to, to comfort, so to speak. I mean, it's, it's just nonsense. I just can't believe it. But unfortunately, it seems like uh, we need to go through harder times for people to wake up and turn things around. Now, that is all of the awards. And I'll just close with a little bit of a, um, a bit of an overview of the year. So, I mean, we have had a bit of a re return to normality, a little bit of a return to normality, and I think people are becoming a little complacent, unfortunately. But make sure that uh, things will get tougher in years ahead. We've seen interest rate rises, of course. Many people are going to struggle to keep their homes. Uh, times will get tougher. I can definitely assure you economically, socially, we are always having um, new pushes of uh, agendas, gender fluidity is coming in. We're going to have Australia Day um, continue to be attacked, as we always have been um, hearing and seeing for all these past years. We've, of course, got this uh, voice to Parliament, this referendum coming up. And, I mean, that's a very scary notion in what that plans to do. I mean, we're not even seeing detail, but we know that that's going to be a farce. And that's just the globalist agenda, being able to eventually take people's properties off them. Um, basically, a communist takeover, globalist kind of agenda, making sure that we don't have private property anymore. And that um, that ends up going um, to other people um, that aren't going to be in a position of strength to, to hold on to it. And eventually it'll be taken off them when they are no longer of any use. Just be used, basically. That's all it's going to be. So, um, very tough year ahead, guys. I mean, you've got to keep your head up. Don't become blackpilled. Make sure that uh, things are going to work for us because we're going to fight hard, and that's all we can do. So, uh, you might have noticed a little bit of a change in furniture here. The other one is in storage, but I'll take it out eventually when we have future years of Unshackler Awards. And I hope you enjoyed this because I definitely did. And uh, let's just make sure that we um, can see these awards for what they are. We definitely have a lot better candidates here than someone that is a, a body shaming expert. Um, the person that become Australian of the Year this year, of course, is someone that is against uh, body shaming and that is, um, you know, telling people how beautiful they are in becoming obese and that they shouldn't be worried about being unhealthy. So we're definitely going to have a lot of uh, more skyrocketing costs. Um, in society, which is just great. Definitely going to be good for uh, Medicare, even though Medicare hardly exists anymore. So, um, future costs, of course, onto society. I mean, having more people become less self-sufficient, less able to take care of themselves, so the government can step in and treat us like babies, basically control us. So, um, let's just wait for all the other goodies to come about, you know. I mean, I'm sure we've got microchips in the future. We've definitely got more boosters coming, so um, just make sure we've got an election coming in New South Wales coming up very shortly. Make sure you vote right and correctly because if you don't, you don't want wall-to-wall -wall Labor governments. Definitely don't want that. I mean, just imagine how chaotic it's going to be. So continue to look onto our website and check everything out and really enjoyed everything being presented to you guys because you keep us alive, you keep us going. Make sure you tune in and be politically aware of what's going on and be active. Be very active in the movement and in society in general. Wake people up because they need waking up. So these are the end of the awards. My name is Damien Ferry and I will be presenting to you the 2023 awards next year when January 2024 comes ahead. So I will see you then. Um, have a Good day and goodbye for now.